In this video, I'm going to talk about why David Gilmour is the greatest rock guitar player or one of the greatest rock guitar players of all time and what that even means. So David Gilmour was born in 1946 in Cambridge in England and joined Pink Floyd to replace the founding member Sib Barrett very early on in Pink Floyd's career. Pink Floyd became very popular. They started to record, you know, psychedelic, verging on progressive, uh, atmospheric, drug-inspired music, very mellow atmospheric music. In the early days, a bit more, you know, a bit more unusual, um, very experimental. And it was in 1973 when they released Dark Side of the Moon that propelled them into like superstardom. Dark Side of the Moon's not only the greatest, one of the greatest, if not the greatest rock selling albums of all time, but it's one of the greatest selling pieces of music of all time. And not only that, once they released Dark Side of the Moon, they continued with very strong albums. Wish You Were Here, Animals, one of my favorites. One of my absolute favorites, The Wall. The Wall is just an incredibly emotional, personal album that just moves you when you, when you listen to it. I know music is subjective. Obviously, music is subjective. It's like saying beetroot is the greatest vegetable of all time. Uh, everyone's got their own things that they love and their own things that they hate. You've also got the technical musicians that look at David Gilmour and go, how can he be the best when you've got, you know, Michelangelo Batillo and Guthrie Govan and all these like fast, accomplished John Petrucci. How can he be the best when John Petrucci plays faster and does this and does that? Now that's because they're looking at music more as an athletic sport where, you know, you've got to run as fast as you can, like 200 meters as fast as you can. That's not the idea of music though. The idea, although speed is a good ingredient to use in music, if you're just focused on speed, then it's there's no music there. It's like when, you, when you're a young teenager and you're kind of insecure and you're trying to, you know, I've been there, and you're trying to, you know, kick ass and trying to, you know, show people how it's done. You spend hours to playing as fast as you can. And then when it's your time to play, when you've got a little window to show everyone what you, what you can do, instead of telling a story, you run through the alphabet as fast as you can. A, B, C, D, F, G. Imagine a poet. A, B, C, D, F, G. H, J, K, M, L, P. A, B, C, D, F, G. H, J, K, M, L, P. Z, W, like say it in reverse, say it forwards. Blah, blah, blah. Look how fast I can say the alphabet. Meaningless. It's meaningless. It doesn't tell any stories and it's boring and meaningless. Where good musicians are able to tell stories using phrasing and using a very special ingredient that David Gilmour uses a lot, an advanced technique, a technique that I've spent my whole life trying to develop, a technique that I try and inspire other musicians to use, even the musicians in my band, I've been telling them a long time, use space. David Gilmour uses a thing called space. It's, it's a difficult thing to use because when here's your chance to do a solo or whatever, you just want to run over the solo with the, you know, the most impressive stuff you can think of. Instead of listening to the, the, the piece of music that you've got to play over and bringing that out, you've got, when you've got a chord progression, you don't just play over the top of it. You've got to lift that chord progression using melody, using repetition and using space. Playing a phrase, stop. Play a different phrase, stop. Maybe play the same phrase again, or play the same phrase in a slightly variation, a slight variation of the same phrase. That's how you approach phrasing and, and melody, and that's how you tell a story. That's how you start to put words together and tell a musical story. That's why solos like Comfortably Numb, you will see time and time again consistently. If you go on forums or you watch guitar polls, read guitar polls, you know, greatest guitar, rock guitar players, David Gilmour's always right at the top and Comfortably Numb, as an example, is always considered, you know, one of the greatest rock solos of all time. But listen to it. If you sit down and actually listen to it, listen how much space there is. He uses so much space and ordinary guitar players or musicians don't use that type of space. Da, 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 na, 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 na. It's a lot of space. Think of Shine On Your Crazy Diamond. Do you play like that? I, I don't. Go watch the Pink Floyd song Brain Damage. And watch David Gilmour. He plays this um, Bill, Bill Lewis guitar. Sort of like a double humbucker guitar. 
And the, watch what he's playing. He's playing one note, bending it, and then stopping. And then he'll play another note and bend it. And then he'll play the same note and bend it. So much space. He plays so little because he's telling a musical story. He's l Instead of trying to just blow over the music, he's listening to the music and, and sort of letting the music come out. Letting the, you know, let the music come out. Instead of, don't get in the way of the music. Don't start to intellectualize it or think about it. Just... Empty your thoughts and just let the music come out. That's that's what David Gilmore does really, really well. I recently saw an interview with um, another one of my favourites from, from the 90s, John Schofield, a jazz fusion guitar player. Very, very melodic, incredible guitar player who played early on with Miles Davis. And he asked Miles Davis some advice, some help on music. How can I be a better musician? All Miles Davis said was... Play with space. You've got to play with space. That's all he told John Schofield, which is an incredible, incredible, which is an incredibly powerful piece of advice. And it's very difficult to do. It's very difficult to do. Your tendency is to just, you just want to, oh my God, I've got to, it's your turn to play. You better play something, which you shouldn't approach music like that. You should wait till you, even if you play nothing and just wait till you're compelled to play something or hit a note and wait to see where that note takes you or whether you should even continue. Maybe you should hit one note and then stop and let the music breathe. You've got to let the music breathe. That's how you tell stories. That's how you grab an audience and a listener's attention. That's how you grab their attention, using hooks, using repetition, and using slow phrasing that people can absorb. Um, you know, I, I love progressive rock as much as anyone. I love music. I mean, fa the the... the Surprises in music is my main thing. Oh, that's why I like Frank Zappa and all the prog bands, you know, um, Dream Theater and all that. I like surprises, yes. Um, King Crimson. I like some musical surprises where you're like, whoa, what are they doing here? I love that. But even then, when you're playing prog music, when you're playing music full of surprises, Black Sabbath does it a lot. Black Sabbath will be, you'll be listening to this song and all of a sudden they're off on a different direction. Happens all the time with Black Sabbath. Um... So Led Zeppelin does it, Pink Floyd does it. But um, but when you do that, when you're putting surprises in music and you're taking it in different directions, you still need to use hooks, use phrasing. You still need to tell a story. Otherwise, it's meaningless. So you still do need to use things where you're repeating yourself, where you're, um, where you're pacing yourself, where you're using space. Use space. Now, I, I think speed is also a good ingredient. You know, classical musicians, Tchaikovsky, Mozart, Bach, all, all the great classical, Beethoven, use speed in their music. Paganini use speed, speed in their music as a way to express, you know, express yourself musically with speed. It's it kind of, it's good for those moments where you want to have, like, intensity and, you know, drama and all that kind of stuff. Ingve Malmsteen, one of my favorite guitar players, I consider him a feel player. I don't consider him a technical player. Even though he's a shredder, I think he's a feel player. And, and some of those solos for me go into that same category as, as Comfortably Numb. This is a, probably an odd choice, but Ingve has an album called Eclipse and this first song, Making Love. That solo is incredible. That solo is just, has so much feel to it, as far as I'm concerned. And I saw a video on YouTube where they were playing it live in about 1990. Um, you know, and the live version was even better than the studio version. It was unbelievable. Alan Holdsworth's another guitar, guitar player that tends to not use repet repetition as much and does use speed, but still has great feel. In fact, I would consider the band UK, their song In the Dead of Night with guitar player Alan Holdsworth, to me, that is the greatest guitar solo of all time, above everything else. But that's just my, my opinion. But anyway, so there you go. That's why I believe that David Gilmore is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, rock guitar player of all time.